fees are the plaintiffs Valerie and Anthony Sines. Valerie claims she was sitting on the front steps of her condo with her cat Scampy and a friend when the defendant came jogging by with his unleashed dog. He came over to greet her friend, and that's when his dog went after Scampy, injuring her. They're suing for $169.50 for vet bills. This is the defendant, Todd Euler. He says he was jogging down the road, minding his own business, when the plaintiff's friend insisted he come over to say hello. The plaintiff's cat suddenly hissed and clawed at his dog, Samantha, and the two of them took off into another yard. He's accused of failing to control his dog. We'll return for the case of A Taste of Scampi after these messages. Two young men went running by, joggers, with their dog unleashed. Was your dog on a leash, sir? No, sir. What's your defense to this action? That uh, I was invited onto their property by Charlene, a resident of the building. You may have been invited onto the property, but and you could bring the dog too if you had the dog on a leash. On private controlling, property. Controlling the dog. Sir, sir, sir. Yes. Sir. Yes. Does the leash law hold true on private property where I was invited? You still have to control your dog. Well, if it's your private property, that's another story. Mm -hmm. You want to tell me something, sir? Were you running with uh, Mr. Ross? Yes, I was. Um, as far as the dog running in the back, the dog was sniffing along the grass. The cat bailed over the uh, the wall there. It's like a patio for the dog front followed door. the cat. Not in hot pursuit, so to speak. As far as after cold pursuit, very much just hot sniffing pursuit. on the ground. You know, sniff, 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 where'd it go? Did you see the dog attack the cat? No, it happened beyond... <laughs> Did beyond the dog the attack bed. the cat at some point? Well, we heard a scuffle. I, you know, can't say. It didn't come back with fur in its mouth. And the cat didn't jump into another yard. It jumped over the wall, and it didn't land like a cat. It bottomed out. It didn't, it didn't, it didn't, it didn't. It just... <laughs> and then got and ran away. Talk to you, talk to you. Woo! Woo! The purpose of the leash law is that so that people will control their dogs, sir. There's just no excuse for what you did. Judgment for plaintiff for 169.50. The defendant, Mr. Euler, is on his way out of the courtroom. What's your reaction to Judge Wapner's decision, Todd? Well, he said it was because of the leash law, and I think there should be a leash law for a cat, and it's kind of foolish cats, having a leash law. Cats for don't that. apply. They don't come under a leash law. There is no law. Cats are kind of worthless, but... <laughs> no, cat lovers would disagree with you strenuously. For that. Well, Let me ask you one other question, though. I'm sure you're aware that there have been so many incidents reported and a lot of news recently generated by pit bull attacks. Agree? Agree. What do you think other, the reaction of other people would be seeing you jog along with a pit bull not on a leash? I mean, scare the dickens out of them. They should people. say that must be an awful nice pit bull to be off a leash, because it sure is. Looks like a sick son of a bitch. <laughs> well, good luck. You're Thank taking you. a gamble, a Thank big you. gamble. Hope it's worth it. And that will bring this session of the People's Court to a close. I'm Doug Llewellyn, thanking you for joining us and reminding you, if you're involved in a dispute with another party such as this and you just can't seem to work it out, don't resort to taking the law into your own hands. You take them to court. The People's Court is produced by Ralph Edwards Productions in association with Stu Billet Productions and is distributed by Lorimar Telepictures.